Hey, it's Tim, pickup truck plus SUV talk. And right behind me, yeah, that's Fort Wayne Assembly, not my coat. Fort Wayne Assembly, where they build the Silverado and Sierra 1500s, which, hey, look what I'm in. I'm in a Silverado 1500, yeah. I just bought this truck, so for more on this truck, check the channel, I'll have a bunch of videos. And I just drove it 10 miles from the dealership back to the factory to see how it was actually built. So a couple notes on this, if you haven't been to the factory tour before, you can hear a couple things. You'll hear some music playing. And that, that sound of music alerts the manager of the area that there's an issue. They have a little red light too, and so they go and address the issue. The line's always moving, so you do not want the line to stop, but they want to fix issues before they come out of the factory, obviously. We're going to go ahead and talk about they have the axles outside the ship from Mexico. We'll put those into the factory. We'll see that go through the process. We'll see the engines and transmissions get mated, engines and transmissions built elsewhere. We'll see that get mated to the frame. We'll see them flip over the frame. We'll also check out the body shop, and the body shop looking for defects and things. It's pretty cool. They go through, they have white lights and things. The very sort of defects come from stamping. They fix those on site and make sure the truck is perfect when it leaves. Lots of camera work involved in that as well. We will not be going to paint. Paint's the one thing I'm not going to see today. Paint is very particular. Uh, you can't have certain body lotions, you can't have certain perfumes, you can't have certain things. It's really kind of a pain in the butt, so I'm glad we didn't go to paint. But I've done it other times. Paint's really interesting. It's really an art form, what those guys do. But hey, let's go ahead and get inside and show you what's going on and how they build these new Silverados and Sierras. Okay. Okay, so, so here you've got an example of an, out, of an outer panel for a box. Okay. So it's the outer show skin. And these get ro loaded into the cell in the rack, and then a robot will come and pick them up and then take them to go down later in the process. Those are all in racks that are pretty geometrically, structurally sound. But here we have just bins with parts that come in relatively stacked the same every single time. And we just installed this probably five months ago. And what this is is called bin picking. So in order, instead of having an operator here that has to go through and load parts to a fixture, the material actually loads these bins in and the robot will go through a series of cameras and search algorithms to know where to go exactly to pick a part. And yeah. then it can load it to the line. So it's faster, it's more efficient. And with the, as hard as it is to get people to work in manufacturing these days, sometimes we have to go to these robot type picks just in order to have enough people to run. So we'll see more of that in the industry going forward and body shops design more like this in the future. Yeah, I mean, so that one's got a part picked up. Mm -hmm. That grabbed it. And then that goes over there, okay. And that loads it to an intermediate geometric fixture, which holds the part on pins to locate it geometrically for a good solid robot pick. And, and that robot's welding those pieces together up there, right? Say it again. Looks like welding up there. Mm -hmm. So okay. Yep. So all, all these, almost every single one of these stations rarely gets any welding done in the station with the operator. Usually the robot, the operator loads to a station. Robots come and pick, or that, or the station will rotate. And the, the welding will happen on this offside. Keeps the welding flash away from the operator. We still have some, but that's changed a lot in the industry over the last 15 years. We're trying to keep it directly out of the way of the operator. So what I wanted to show you here is our framing of our box line, and hopefully it'll get moving here in a second. Uh, this is kind of a new concept for us, the build of the box. These use what are called geo pallets. So a pallet, this, this whole entire line is a big loop. Rolls on the ground level, box comes off of it, and then the empty geo pallet goes upstairs, indexes back over up top, comes down to the beginning of the line. Okay. What that does for us is it means that every single one of these skid transfer pallets are actually geometrically controlled or dimensionally controlled pallets, each individual one. So as it comes through, if it's, if, I don't know if it's gonna get going here in a minute or not, um, we'll load a platform, a rear cross sill, and then we'll freight, we'll temporarily put on the box sides, they'll come into this station and then clamp everything up to it. It sets our geometry. But it's all going through clamped up on the same fixture moving with the job, not just going in and, okay, here's your fixture, the fixture moves to the job. So it allows us a little bit uh, faster transfer times, allows us to have uh, less complicated stations, um, and it's proven now to be a very good concept for us. This is new for our body shop. So, um, if it doesn't go through right now, maybe we'll come back and visit on our way out. Yeah, I just want to look, I just was going to take a, because uh, that, that's got the bottom to it and it's got the sides to it. Mm -hmm. So, there Here we go. go. All right. So you put the pieces together, put more pieces together, mm -hmm. and just in steps. Yeah, because you got the your cross members for the bottom of the bed. Because so, yep. the bed is upside down at the moment. Yes, we actually weld upside down here. Weld upside and down. You can see it right up here up top if you haven't seen this in any of your other visit plants. Um, this is called a brick. 
Okay. It's an acronym I can't remember what it stands for right now, but it's, it actually has overhead mounted robots. What that allows us to do is typically in a station you might be able to have four or maybe six robots. On the side here I think we can get up to 13 robots all in the same station. So you can set your geometry almost on one single station and do a lot more complex welding all in the smaller footprint. So it makes it so that we can compress these lines, have a lower, smaller footprint. Body shops don't have to be that huge. Yeah, yeah. It's really neat seeing them really start doing their dance. Yeah. So this is one of our uh, many stations throughout our body shop that uses a uh, company called Perceptron, is who makes the equipment. And what it is, is there's cameras on the end of robots. And what this system does is it uh, shoots a laser across a feature. A feature can be a hole, it can be an edge, it can be a surface, an oval. And it can tell by running the picture of the la where the laser hits on the feature by taking that picture and comparing it, running it through an algorithm in order for it to determine that, okay, this feature is so many millimeters off of where it should be. Okay, so it could be a quarter millimeter, eighth of a millimeter, it gets down very small, or it could be something higher. And there are limits set up for every one of those features. And the camera goes around the multiple points throughout uh, up to, I think, eight or 13, depending on um, the cycle time of the station, how many points to get, in order to help us control our quality, not only for making sure that it's consistent from job to job, but if we end up getting a flyer, something just doesn't look right. And we can kick it out to our repair station and have one of our skilled tradesmen come and inspect it, take a look at the data, and figure out, oh, okay, this is fine, it's all dirty, didn't get a picture, or, oh, no, we got ourselves a build issue, we gotta go to some troubleshooting and figure out what we've got going on. So we've got these, uh, at most of the ends of lines of all of our different major uh, pay points of our body shop for not only the cab, but also the box, doors, hoods, and that, all of our major commodities so that we can collect data on every single truck and we can look back if there's a problem in General Assembly or there's a problem later on or someone has a question, we can go back to the data of every single job and say, oh no, it was, it was good here, it was not, and oh, yeah, we got something more to look at, something to investigate, but we use this on every single job and it is one of our best quality control features that we have. So are they using uh, iPhones or Android? <laughs> Neither one. <laughs> So, because that, I mean, but that, we do actually, and that red arm has got the camera, right? Yeah, that little box. That little box, yeah, yeah. That is correct. That is has the camera on it. And you see it moving around from spot to spot to spot. And, and we also have fixed cameras. So, you, if you look inside, there's oh, longer yeah. ones at the bottom. They just only get one feature. But we, it's a combination of both just to give us the best overall picture, if you will, of the quality of each vehicle going through. So this is our what we call our option verification station. That's this booth that you see here. And inside there, you've got all sorts of cameras and sensors. Um, you've also got, uh, also made, some of them are Perceptron as well here. And we're not really doing uh, dimensional checks here, but what we're doing here is making sure that for, for example, you ordered yourself a brand new Silverado, and it may have had OnStar, it may have had a sunroof, it may have had um, different options on it and we this makes sure that as it comes out of our body shop and this is the very last station of our body shop that no sort of um, manual intervention or something got out of whack to make sure that no kidding you do have the whole punch punch for your sunroof the whole drain bolts and you do have the actual sunroof on the job and it's a Chevy fender with a Chevy box with a Chevy door all that so it checks every single one of these jobs it goes through line and if it finds something that doesn't seem quite right it will kick it over off to the side and go to what's called our heavy repair. And then they'll go through and double put actual eyes on it and figure out what the problem was, if at all. This is very nice to have. This has saved us so many 
these oddball things that show up in General Assembly over the years. Like, how in the world did that happen? Well, no, it left our shop exactly the way it was. So then it, you know, it kind of splits the dictionary as far as, okay, did something happen to paint? Did something happen to GA? Did we not get the right story? Yeah, yeah. So it helps with troubleshooting quite a bit. So you match up the VINs with what their options are, put by special numbers on them, mm -hmm. the system gets coded, mm -hmm. this verifies like QR codes. And exactly. Like that. All the jobs are tracked with an, an, an individual, it's called a PVI, Product Vehicle Identifier. I think it's what it stands for. Essentially it means everything's got its own barcode, if you want to think of it that way. But we only have one, two, three barcodes on the job. One on the cab, one on the box, one on the tailgate. But as you can see, we have hoods, we have fenders, we have uh, all, all kinds of different components that are, what are our option content. So this is the final check. This comes in, says, all right, this is job one, two, three. And then it, it takes, uh, goes to the database, says, all right, one, two, three, has all these option codes, double check it. You're good, you're rock solid, let's ship it on the paint. And this is just all stamping comes in. The yes. stamping comes in, you guys put together and bolt it together, weld it different stations of robots, goes through there, gets quality checked, and then goes over to paint. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Essentially what a body shop does is take smaller, pan smaller panels, building them up, building them up until you have an assembly, usually then adding an outer skin to it, dimensionally checking it with our quality with Perceptron, or, what, or uh, in some cases areas don't have Perceptron, through uh, normal inter checks on certain intervals by the operators or team leaders to make sure that the quality is being checked on, on a regular basis. Put it all together, should be expected one more final time, which you'll see here in a minute. Ship it on to paint. And uh, the tailgate goes on here. We actually do it upside down through paint. Yeah. Uh, it helps out with the process because if there's any dripping of the elbow system, it goes to the top or the bottom, which is the top of the tailgate, that we put a plastic cap over it. So it makes it so there's less quality that you have to, you know, elbow drips and stuff you have to fix. We're going to put a cap on it anyway. Customer is just as just as happy. With it. Doesn't notice, yeah. Yeah. This, they're on standoffs just so they can go through the paint pro all the way through the paint process uh, to get the, all the Elpo and primer and paint and everything else on there. And you're right. You can see with this lighting, you can see those defects. If any defects, I mean the way that light bends around it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just turn the camera. I can just see the differences sure. there. And some of those are feature lines, but yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's I mean, the thing about metal. If I took a inspection stone to every panel on here, I would find thousands of defects, right, but right. they're so minute yeah. that the, the process of the paint and everything, it fills everything in, smooths everything out. It's better to just get the only, big ones, only get fix the, ones the big ones, then, get, yeah. and, and, and that comes with training. Yep. Makes sense. Huh. So the, I'm showing you this because of it. it's a applying sealer, and you can see in the station just ahead of it, it's oh, doing yeah, the yeah. same thing. Yep. Right through there. You'd be hard pressed to find a, a joint or a surface on this vehicle that doesn't have sealer between metal components or different metal parts. Just to give that much more structural rigidity uh, and areas to, to reduce water leaks, to reduce wind noise. Uh, it's, it's amazing how much sealer we put between panels here now. You can kind of see the black line all the way around there. Yep, so we got yep. black, we got blue, we got purple, we got all different types of structural uh, adhesives, uh, anti-flutter, uh, like in the uh, hoods or doors, keep panels from, from vibrating from wind, the anti-flutter sealers. So it's, uh, it's really amazing. This truck has got, I don't know, three or four or five times more sealer than the previous version of our, of our K2 product. So this is our roof decking station. If you th can think about, okay, a roof's got to go on a vehicle, right? See, it's yeah. gonna, rope, uh, something's gonna put a roof on top of the vehicle, it's gonna clamp up, we're gonna crowd everything, clamp everything in order to make sure that you know it's where it needs to be, right? If you imagine a huge, monstrous fixture, yeah. and, and, and enormous amount of clamps and cylinders and everything firing. Well, what um, General Motors uh, installed and came up with, even our previous version truck, it actually uses a camera system with an algorithm that runs very similar to Perceptron for quality checks, in which the body comes in without the roof, sits down, the camera system takes uh, pictures if you, and measurements of where the body is, takes the roof over, hovers above it, takes pictures of the roof, and figures out exactly where to put that roof. Does a quality check to make sure everything looks good, welds it up, and then does a final quality check. So there's four checks that are being done in order to check the body, the roof, body on the roof, or roof on the body, and then overall quality afterwards. So it eliminates tons of equipment, tons of maintenance, tons of faults, tons of things falling apart over yeah. time. 
Not the easiest thing to, to install initially, but works great once you get it out of The step goes. Yeah, it is neat. So this is a hemming press. What it does here is that you've got your inner panel. This is for a front door, front uh, left hand door. And what it is, when you make the door, you make an inner assembly. So that's got all your structural reinforcements. It's got all the places where you're gonna bolt everything on in GA. It's got your crash bars, your reinforcements around your window, all that kind of stuff. Well, then you add a skin or the outer skin to it, and you gotta connect it somehow. And you don't wanna see a bunch of welds all around your door. If you open your door, you don't wanna see weld spots all over the place, right? So what you do here is they marry the inner and the outer with a hem sealer around the perimeter. And this press, what it's doing is it's coming down and it's giving a pre-hem to the outer panel. And then immediately after, it gives a final hem, so it kind of crushes down the, the flange on the perimeter of the door. And in this case, it's not only doing the outer perimeter, but it's also doing the perimeter of your inside of your window opening. So you're not gonna have wolves around the inside of there. It's much easier. So it's just a neat little process, watch it go down. The one it just hemmed, it actually raised up to the top. The robot comes in, it's gonna drop off an unhemmed assembly into the onto the anvil or the lifter and drop to the anvil and pick up the old one. very very quickly stuff moving in and out beside each other it makes you nervous the first time you see it <laughs> yeah I, i'm glad robots doing that job i don't think person wants to do that job <laughs> <laughs> no, really. there we go. that's cool yeah that's neat it really is hammer operation we got lucky we'll be able to see it right when we walked up here so it's going to drop off an inner and outer assembly very similar to the door line that we saw <clears throat> it's going to have a robot come in hold it down and then another robot come in and, and actually perform the hit, the roll or hammer operation. Oh yeah, grab it up, so mm -hmm. grab it over there. We'll pick it up. And that's that inner panel, that multi-pro tailgate yeah, or whatever. Yeah, this is what the multi-pro, the top portion or the smaller portion comes yeah. in. sealer to it right now. It's an adhesive, structural adhesive basically. Pushes that metal down. Mm -hmm. That's right. Just folds it over a little. Now it's folding it over a little bit more. <laughs> you only really can do it where you've got cycle time to do it. Uh, lower running volume stations, but you know, it can be designed to run full rate too. It all depends on how many of these stations you want to have right next to each other, and how many different robots you'd have doing the roller hem. Now it's doing the final hem. That went from a flange sitting up roughly 90 degrees to folding over in on itself back around to 180 degrees. Or zero, however you want to look at it. So it's neat. Yeah. So this is our automatic door and hood hinging station. So an operator loads pallets with a different option, whether it be uh, Chevy or GMC for the hinges. Also loads the bolts, robot comes, picks them up, 
and then actually with cam once again camera systems check to see where the body is feeding information back to the robot to where exactly to load it and it actually loads in drives all the bolts so going to this from a normal uh, operator you know some sort of hoist load and a fixture on a hoist to this which is much more geometrically sound so a lot less calls for fit issues or um, issues related to the fit door to door door to c pillar door to fender all this dropped off drastically when we installed all this and what it's doing right there is just checking do i have enough bolts and now it's going to go up and load it based once again on what model came in here and what model had to get loaded up and then once the hinges are on, the operator can just easily set the door on top of it. And then do, does another robot put the bolts in for the door? No, actually for our doors, the, oper the op those AGC cars that we saw moving around, three stores as well. Okay. The operator picks those up with the hoist, loads it to the body, and actually shoots bolts. Okay. Yeah. Back in the day, a couple generations ago, you actually had pins that you dropped the door onto pins. Yeah. Now we actually load it right to the hinge that you see exposed there, put the door right up to it, Shoot your two bolts on top, two bolts on bottom. Okay. So the front wheels are the same. You got different front wheels that are going on, different sizes. Uh, and then the four wheel drive is going to be a little bit different than what you put on a two wheel drive. And again, the frame's on upside down. If you look over there, this gentleman that's putting the exhaust on. He's getting the exhaust off of that overhead monorail over there. And below that overhead monorail are the leaf springs to the rear axle. Oh yeah, I see them all the way over there. Yeah, see that concept over there, that overhead monorail that you see coming down has the gas tank on it, and it also has the prop shaft on it. That is sub-assembled 150 yards down the, the aisle. We'll see that later. He's picking it up. He's got to know he's got the right one. He's putting it on. Again, the frame's still upside down. Just down from that installation, the guy's already pulled the prop shaft off and put that on in there too. Comes the frame upside down. This gantry, you can see the locating pins on it. Big, big steel bars on that. Again, the frames are different lengths, so the holes are different lengths also. So it's got to read the barcode, understand what frame's on there, align itself perfectly. It's making its adjustments now. It's going to come down. It's going to come in, pick up the, the frame with the four posts. It's going to lift it up, flip it over. Now we got the frame right side up and we're going up to what we call the brake deck. And that, did I see that spare tire is on there already too? Yes. Huh. So our tires come in, our tires and our wheels are sub-assembled from another company across the street. Okay. So when they come in on a truck, I got a set of five. And they come on one big conveyor, I got five of them coming down. And then I get a little diverter, kicks off one. That's the spare tire and that comes over here. Then I kick off two to the right side of the truck, then I kick off two to the left side of the truck on two separate conveyors. And they're riding, as we're talking, they're riding down the, the, the center of the plant over to where you're gonna see them come on and get put on. And they get married just in time, probably, when yep. it comes through. Perfect. Yep. Absolutely. Perfectly. And you got, I mean, that one's got skid plates, so you got skid, you put the skid plates, put everything on, flip it over, then it goes, yeah, okay. Yep. And it's, it's ease of assembly for the operator, right? You try to make it as ergonomically friendly as possible. So here's the engine line I told you about. It, that starts on the other side. It goes down and bends up this way. And you can see how that uh, overhead is holding that up. For the average person, you're gonna work shoulder length and mid thigh. If you're a little shorter, you got a little reaching. If you're a little taller, you got a little reaching down. But it's designed for the average person to have an envelope where they don't get hurt. This line runs all the way down where that guy is on the, on the aisle, past him. Then that goes up, comes back down. You can see them just through there, the motor's coming in. Yeah. Got that, they're coming down, back around here. Here comes the motor and the transmission fully assembled. 
And that one is going to get assembled into that frame right below you. And this is the master of teamwork. The guy on the far side is going to pick it up with the hoist off the, the overhead monorail. As his partner on the near side is clearing everything out of the way, he's going to make sure that the small prop shaft is hooked up to the long prop shaft and everything is fully assembled so we can continue assembling the motor and the tranny going down the line. Just watch this for a minute. And nobody gets hurt. They're not working together. This guy can get really, really badly hurt. He's getting the prop shaft in there for the rear wheels. He's getting the prop shaft in there for the front wheel, putting it all together. Comes out. The process, this area here, obviously the line's running, that, that's not running, that's why they're not working. But they're going to be watching electronically to see if there was any errors in the in building that the truck was any repairs made. They're going to verify that they were done and done properly and either removed from the computer or if they didn't get repaired properly, they'll, get, they'll put them back in or they'll leave them as a repair because it didn't get done. So, I mean, this is it. This is the final inspection point you said. So this is this is the point where we're going to start adding components on top of this. But this is we got frame, we got spare tires, we got shocks, we got brakes, we got the axles. We're ready to roll for the body going on top. We're getting close. Get close. We're getting close. There's a few more that we got to do down here. That the this uh, there's a another strategic area for buffers in there. When we changed into when we got that billion dollar investment, we changed the configuration of where we built parts. Brand new body shop, brand new trim shop, brand new paint shop. There was different things done in here. So this used to be the end of chassis. Technically, it's final zero. They didn't know what to call it because you still got some chassis components going on in the first few jobs. And then when we get up to cab set, that's where you're gonna see where it really becomes final. Because now the truck looks like the final product. And these 54 seconds is each station. Do they call the inspectors at 54 seconds or can they stop the line they see something? If they see something that warrants them to stop it, they can stop it. Okay. And so those, those cabs, they were in paint. Yep. They come out of paint. You guys, another subline you said. Before that, they were in the body shop. Yep, body shop. Body shop went to paint, okay. came over to trim. Right. When it came over to trim, it looked just like that on the, on the outside. Sure. The, the doors both came off, went somewhere, the front doors went somewhere else, the left door went to one side, the right door to the other, rear door. Another place, left side, right side. Cab, another place. Box, another place. And they all come together here. Yeah. Okay. And that all started roughly a mile ago in conveyor length. And you said a thousand people per shift? Yeah. Maybe a little less. Because I got trades in there, right? You got to uh, count trades. I thought it was 1,300. Now, Give or take. Ballpark it. Yeah. You got to give trades credit. Yeah, that's true. Because we run three, three, three shifts, 24 hours. Yeah. It sounds easy. You got to keep the chain moving. That's it true. ain't that easy. You know anything about mechanics? 24 hours a day, every day. No kidding. It's got to run. It can't stop. It's got to run the right time. Which means, yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Right. Here's the good thing about all the. Uh, the trains, and that's really, they're not actually sitting on the line working, but you're right, probably a thousand actually put yeah. together. So when we had that big investment uh, to add the paint shop and the body shop, this was brand new about five years ago, our cab set. You can see the, the cab coming in on the far side, the silver one. The box is going to come in behind it. While this, uh, this hoist is going over to pick it up automatically, 
the frame is going to come in and set down perfectly automatically. The cab and the box will come down and get set up and married in there. And you've got robots down here that's going to go in there with nuts and bolts and tighten it up. Think back when Henry Ford did this, how many people were over there putting that together? No kidding. It's interesting that you you pick it up and bring it over. I've seen other lines where they kind of just marry them coming off the line. Hey, Kendra. Huh. I'm on a tour showing the plant, showing the guy the plant. I love you. Alright, bye-bye. Sorry, my wife trumped you. <laughs> so from here we're not we'll stay here and watch this a little bit just because i think this is absolutely amazing to see this goes down to the back wall and there's people that work underneath the trunk making sure any electrical connections are hooked up and everything on the undercarriage is done right before the truck actually hits the ground and the area behind you final one we call this the snake area because it snakes back and forth and as we walk past it getting over to the, the the final line final three we have fluid fill we put about a liter of, of fuel in it we put a uh, windshield fluid in it we got the antifreeze going in it it's already got brake fluid in it back on the, the brake deck that we saw earlier and that's all the instructions for the build, or is that just sign off? That's how to build it. Yep. That's okay. the recipe to make the cake. Okay. And, and that one came off of the trim area, so they put them in a different area for people to see it. You're gonna have a, you're gonna have a matrix for the doors, how to put them together. You're gonna have a matrix for the instrument panel, how to put it together, what radio it gets, and things of that nature. You've got it for the cab, what interior do you get, what seats do you get, all that good stuff. Obviously on the chassis, what, we, what, uh, what, what wheels, what rear axles, what mufflers. Every main line has its own matrix. And it all comes off of reading that frame originally. How's that truck put together? One of the last pieces of paper we put on it will be the actual uh, invoice. You get to look at it. I did it when I ran frame one. I go, man, that looks like a good looking truck. Let me go see how much it costs. Uh-oh, I gotta save my money. Yeah. <laughs> Five tires on it. You push one off the chassis line to put the spare tire on the frame. You've got two coming up over here for the right side of the truck, or the left side of the truck, and you got another two on another conveyor gonna match up on the other side. And that's roughly about three quarters of a mile of conveyor to get it to hit that truck with those tires and those wheels on it to what the customer wanted. And it, it, this is just perfectly in time too. They're not, they're stacking up, but you know, they go right down the line, go right in, everything matches up. Yeah. They'll come down. There'll be a little bit of a buffer, right? We showed you strategic buffers throughout the whole process. Right. So they can hold, I don't know how many it is. I'm not that familiar. Maybe enough for five, six trucks up there. But there's more tires getting loaded as we speak. If you think about it, you've got from this point down to here, I'm going to guess maybe 80 trucks. So you got 80 trucks that we already put tires on. You got another 180 coming off of that frame room, and there's more coming. You saw, you remember the old uh, Lucy and the Chocolate Factory? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's always... There's, there's more always, coming. Yeah. There's more coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and if yeah. you don't get help and help the right people do it, when you first get a job here, we tell people, don't freak out. You're going to learn the job. But you might feel like Lucy in the beginning. Yep. But you'll get it. You can't work ahead, work at the pace, the line's designed, because we try to put the jobs together where you've got X amount of parts to put on so you're not overworked over there. But at the same time, you're doing enough to make money for us. Yep. And, and you can see, to help the, the operator, once he gets it started, the gun will do the work. He can go to the next job, 
and fingers start the nuts on there to get ready. And you said it's all electronically controlled? Yep. We've got a lot of air guns also, but most of our torque, especially with our critical fasteners, they're all done electronically. And we have torque monitors and engineers that monitor the data of what the truck's doing all day long. They'll see if there's trends. Is it shifting to the high side? Is it shifting to the low? We don't wait for it to go out of parameter to make adjustments to try to keep it in the mean. The, the money track, this is where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> You got gas in it, you got oil in it, crank it down, finish up the last two details, and there it is. Huh. Station after that, but we put the bumper on after we had the headlamps on in there, and we had the bigger old headlamps in there, and that was high risk of doing damage over there. So you, now you put the bumper on last after the... Yeah, you've got lamp, you got a different lamp on there all together here. But you've got that, you've got more freedom down at the bottom, so you took away the interference what the operator was fighting with. We'd hammer the operator, don't make it, don't make it, don't make it. It was almost mission impossible at times. So we had to take a look at the process, make the process better. It's not always an operator. Sometimes it's a mechanical problem, sometimes it's a process problem. 90, gotta watch out guys. Like I said, no one comes in wanting to do a bad job. They come in wanting to do a good job. We got to make sure they got what they need to do that good job for us. And the shroud used to be on first, then the bumper would go on. And that's where we had some issues. Now the lights are on, the shroud's not on, the bumper goes on, and it's easier to put that shroud on. It's got more flexibility in there. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a final line inspection. What they're looking for is any imperfections. They'll pop the hood, they'll turn on the windshield wipers, turn on the lights. They see the white lights, so you're looking for the paint imperfections. Going through all the final details, make sure it rolls up the line in perfect condition. That is absolutely how the customer ordered it and how you want to get your new truck. There's no problem to it. They'll take this over and put it on a dyno to run through some transmission shifting, run through the engine, make sure everything's operating correctly, make sure the vehicle's doing its job. If it doesn't pass that inspection, it goes to a separate spot inside the factory where they go through and they inspect it as more defects, fix those problems before it leaves the factory. If the trucks are good, they go, go, down to, go outside, they go sit on a rail yard, they get on a train to go across the country, or they get shipped on to a transport and go to local dealers in the area. So there's your details on the Fort Wayne General Assembly and Body Shop. Again, we didn't see the paint because paint's kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, it does look pretty cool when they get it done. So make sure you check out the videos over here, website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.